Hi all, welcome to my channel. I'm Yunus. In this video, I'll talk about DevOps professional certification exam. I'll talk about how I prepared for the exam, including a few useful tips for test takers like you. I'll also talk about the topics and subtopics from where I got questions in my exam. During the video, I'll mention about a few useful links. I will provide all those links in the video description. So let's begin. As I had suggested in my earlier videos, you can actually follow a practice test driven learning process for this certification exam as well. What I'm saying is instead of going through hundreds of reading material three to four times and then finally being able to retain only 10% of that, instead of that what you can do is you take two or three full length practice tests and then analyze your answers, especially the wrong answers and understand the key features of the services which are being questioned in the exam understand your weak areas and then do a targeted study if, for example if you are weak in s3 storage classes go back to the s3 documentation or s3 frequently asked questions these are very good documents go through that and understand that particular specific area which where you got the answer wrong and you know that even if you spend two weeks in going through all the available S3 documentation and at the end of it if you are giving a quiz S3 quiz you may not get 100% marks you will miss some of those very specific features of S3 so when you are preparing for the exam it is very important that you understand which are the key features which are being questioned in the exam and how they can twist those questions if you are able to take say two full length practice tests plus the official practice test of 20 questions and if you are analyzing those answers and updating your notes and keep going back to your notes whenever you get time you will be able to pass this exam in one month it is good to do some hands-on exercises but it is not really mandatory anyway i will provide some useful links to practical exercises in my video description but as i said it is not really mandatory but it is always good if you can actually do some practical exercises okay so here is the plan i'm suggesting now let's see the suggested exam preparation plan you can start by going through the video based training provided by aws i'll give you the link in a bit but right now let us just look at the plan so start by familiarizing yourself with the exam topics the best material you can use is the free video based training provided by aws and once that is done you can go through the sample questions provided by aws there are some 10 sample questions again i'll show you that in a bit but this is the order in which you can proceed then you can analyze the wrong answers from this sample questions and then update your notes after that you can buy a set of practice tests from udemy or any other providers some of them which i would suggest is tutorials dojo test or Stephen Marek's test or Neil Davis test from Udemy but you can choose there may be other practice tests available as well in that set usually there will be two tests you can take the test number one and analyze the wrong answers and update your notes then you repeat the process for the second test as well and if there are more tests you can take the other test as well but you don't need to take more than three full length practice tests and before each practice test go through the notes whatever you have prepared until then and finally you take the official practice test there are 20 questions and if you are able to get somewhere around 60 to 65 percentage then you are ready to go for the final exam so this is the high level exam preparation plan now let us go into the details of each and the first step is familiarizing yourself with the topics first thing is go through the official training provided by aws it is digital it is free you can skim through the videos and take notes so here is the link i'm going to include that in the video description so don't worry about the link so here you can see there are multiple modules here get to knowing the exam then get to know exam style questions you should go through this and then most important part is prepare for the exam where it actually gives you video based trainings on the five or six different domains which are included in the exam so please go through that again don't spend a lot of time on the initial preparation try to spend a couple of days maybe two to three days and two hours per day that is more than enough and if you need any additional study materials 
there are a few which i can suggest you can use a couple of the money's tutorials dojo exam study guide i'll show you that in a bit so this is the one this actually explains about the certified devops engineer professional exam the study path the topics and study materials the cheat sheets practice tests etc there are a lot of links introduction to devops blue green deployments white paper so a lot of good links are also there so try to go through this it's a very informative one you can use this also as the study material apart from that you can buy any udemy course in udemy there are multiple courses from stephen marek or neil davis or there are other course providers try to buy any of them but you let to pay for that in my view even if you don't buy it is fine these free available materials are more than enough or you can even go through some full length courses in youtube which are available these are sort of additional study materials and as i said keep the initial preparation short go through only one or any one material and don't spend more than 2 3 days and every day couple of hours now which are the practice tests you can take one is the official sample questions so these are the 10 sample questions and the answers are also given at the end explanation is given so, so try to go through this and see how how many marks you are getting if you are able to get 5 out of 10 that is good enough because you are just starting with your preparations if you are able to get like 8 out of 10 you are very good maybe you are already ready for the exam so that's about official sample questions and then there are some additional free tests one is wislabs free test and then tutorials dojo free test i'll just show you the link so this is tutorials dojo free test question number 1 question number 2 you can go through that and then here is the wislabs free test you can take that i haven't tried both these wislabs free test and tutorials dojo free test i haven't tried but i'm just suggesting in case if you would like to take that then by any any of the udemy practice tests what i used was tutorials dojo practice test there are two full length practice tests in that and that was really helpful but there are other practice tests as well so here are some of the practice tests in udemy this is what i used the tutorials dojo one but there are other practice tests from neil davis and uh, stephen marek etc you can choose any of them this set has two practice tests and once you have completed both the practice tests you can go to the official practice test so here is the link to the official practice test you can click on this and you have to enroll for that this is free there are 20 questions and you can complete that in one hour time and if you are able to get something like 60 percentage marks in official practice test you are actually ready for the final exam so here is what i scored in the various practice tests just for information so in the sample questions i could get 5 out of 10 that's it and then i moved on to the tutorials dojo practice test one i did not have time to take that 75 questions as a single test so what i did i divided into set of 10 questions each and then i completed 10 questions then analyzed the answers and then went on to the next 10 questions etc so i got scores ranging from something like 30 to 60 percentage sometimes three questions correct sometimes up to six questions correct that's what i got in the first practice test and the second one was also not very different 45 some 40 to 60 to 70 percentage that's what i got in the two full length practice test then in the official practice test i got 60 percentage and by the time i completed the official practice test i had just couple of days left for my final exam and in my final exam i got 79 percentage which is more than any of the practice test so that has happened with all my aw certification exams now coming to the strategy part try to give yourself around one month to prepare 2 hours per day and please ensure that you can claim 30 minutes extra accommodation if english is not your first language and when you are writing the exam look for keywords in the questions such as cost effective highly available durable frequently accessed less management overhead solution with least effort etc some of these keywords while doing the practice tests it itself you should note down the keywords and the corresponding answer choices if you so so that when you see the question itself when you see that particular keyword you will get a clue to which is the answer and 
This is something which I do in my exams. Skip long questions or seemingly difficult questions or multiple answer questions in the first pass. I just skip it. And when I say seemingly difficult question, when I start reading the question itself within a few seconds, if I get a feel that, oh, this may take some time for me to find the answer or it is difficult or I, I may be confused about that particular topic, etc. I just skip it. I don't try to read it fully because I'll waste time on that. Sometimes it does happen that, okay, I left a question as difficult, but when I came back in the second pass and then tried to answer the question, it was actually simple, but that happens. So, but it is actually better to complete the first pass with all your kind of easy questions and then come back for your difficult questions in the second pass. So when I wrote the exam out of 75 questions, some 30 to 35 questions were kind of lengthy, which means I had to scroll down to see the complete answer choices. Then 18 to 20 multi-answer questions were there. Out of that, I remember some three questions had three answers. Others had two answers. And when I did my exam, I had some 30 questions to handle in the second pass. Now let's look at the key question areas. From which all topics and subtopics, I got questions in my exam. I have divided these questions or areas into subtopics. First one is STLC automation, the CACD tools, code commit, code deploy, code build, code pipeline. All these are important. You need to be thorough with that because a lot of questions come from here. Code commit repository permissions related. A couple of questions were there. Selecting deployment strategies. Some three, four questions were there. And this is blue-green deployment, linear, canary, rolling, rolling with additional batch. You should be very thorough about how these works and in which context. For example, Lambda upgrades, ECS upgrades or some EC2 application upgrades where some of these methods are applicable or not applicable. You should be thorough about that. Then appspec.yaml, the configuration file for code deploy. You should be thorough about the traffic hooks and what activities you can include in each of those hook stages, where to trigger validation scripts, etc. You should have some idea about that. I had a couple of questions on that. Then branching strategy in code commit. They gave a specific scenario and said, okay, you choose the best branching strategy for this. In Elastic Beanstalk, two to three questions were there. So be sure about Elastic Beanstalk. Then auto scaling lifecycle hook related. At least one question was there. For example, during the auto scaling, the EC2 goes through various stages like terminating, terminated, etc. If you want to collect the logs from the EC2 before it gets terminated, you can actually put that to terminating wait state and then do your activity and then continue with the terminating process, etc. So that also you should be thorough with. And infrastructure as code or cloud formation mainly. Rollback failed in cloud formation. There was a question. So what is the reason? It had something to do with S3 bucket not being empty. Then cross stack reference in cloud formation and cloud formation stack set. These two were covered in a couple of questions. Then serverless application model and traffic shifting feature used along with that. SAM. That was also covered in a question. Then when it comes to configuration management, systems manager automation document execution. This was included in one or two questions. Then you should be thorough about config, config rules, auto remediation for configuration rules. There was more than one question from there. SSM patching related, at least one question was there. And ECS, ECS, ECS image tagging related also, there was one question. And how the golden image, after you create the, after you create the golden image, how it is distributed to the larger group, whether the image ID is actually stored in a parameter store, etc. There was a question, something related to that. And step function appears on multiple questions. The answer, may not be a step function, but it appears on multiple questions as answer choice. So you should be thorough about step functions. Regarding monitoring and logging, log subscription filter related, there was at least one question. And even bridge and even notifications, this appears on multiple questions as answer choices, or it will be part of the answer choice. So you should be thorough about these. Route 53 routing related, at least one question was there, weighted routing versus latency routing, but you should be clear about Route 53 routing especially weighted routing, I would say. Inter-region disaster recovery solution, there were a couple of questions. So inter-region setup, for example, code pipeline, cross-region setup, that you should be aware of. Then RTO and RPO related, recovery time objective and recovery point objective related, there was at least one question. 
Instrumenting application using X-ray, there were one or two questions. Instance auto recovery related, there was one question. Cross region disaster recovery strategy with respect to RDS, there was one question. And even S3 cross region replication strategy related, there was some question related to that. And when I say there was a question related to that, not always, it may not be a direct question about that topic always. It may appear as an answer choice. And security parameter store related, there was a question. And even secrets manager, there was a question. I'll come to that. And account factory related one question. Then inspector and trusted advisor, at least one question each. Then how to use policy to give selective access to code commit branches. For example, you have two branches in your code commit and you, you want to give access to one branch for two people and you want to give access to two other people for the other branch. How do you do that using policy? Then secrets manager use cases was covered in some questions. Code pipeline, cross account, cross region context. You need to be aware of that. Then IAM role definitely in every exam, IAM role plays an important role. You will have questions related to that. More than two questions were there. Assume role, pass role, permissions. There were multiple questions. Please ensure that you are thorough with IAM role. And that's it. I hope you were able to get a number of useful tips from this video. Please go ahead and continue with the preparations. And once you complete the exam, please come back here and provide your inputs for other test takers. In the comment box, you can write your experiences. And I will keep coming back with more and more useful videos. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you. Bye.